So continuing <coughs> with the Bhagavad Gita, just a few things I'd like to tell you or you know say about the, about the text. Um, and that is that Arjuna is a very actually a very good listener and very acute. And one, one of the things we see in the beginning of teaching three karma yoga is that Arjuna sees an apparent contradiction in what Krishna has told him. He says, but Krishna, if you consider knowledge of Brahman superior to any sort of action, why are you telling me to do these terrible deeds? Your statements seem to contradict each other. They confuse my mind. Tell me one definite way of reaching the highest good. Um, what Krishna seemingly has told him is that uh, non-action is uh, better than action. That uh, acting in the world, acting in the world, what uh, you 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 shouldn't act. You, you should you should engage in non-action. And Arjuna is saying, well, if you're telling me to engage in non-action, why are you telling me to do this thing, to engage in this action of, of, of fighting and killing in battle? That's a really good point, you know. Uh, but maybe we should remind ourselves, like, what is it that's bad about action itself? Um, I think it comes down to a philosophical point. Action in, in the world is to do certain things, uh, to make certain things happen to have certain outcomes rather than another, rather than others, which is not in itself bad. I think from Krishna's point of view, what's bad is that almost always when we engage in action, it's because we want things. If I get up off the couch and engage in the action of going to the store to buy milk, it's because I have a desire for milk. Um, if, uh, it, it, you know, that is my actions show me that I'm wrapped up in my wants and needs and desires of the things of this world, which again, I don't think is in itself bad. It's bad because of its results. Um, if I am like really wrapped up in the battle as, or my, my problems about the battle, what do I really want to kill people? I have this love for them. What, what that shows is that like Arjuna is, is that I'm attached. I'm attached to the things of this world. And that means I'm distracted from what's really important. What's really important are the things that I can only contemplate with my mind, not the things that I know through my senses. So action is only bad if it is a symptom of our attachment to the, to the things of the senses, you know, which we're supposed to withdraw from. You know, like, as he says, like the tortoise withdrawing into its shell. Um, because as Krishna tells Arjuna later, we'll find it, uh, the, the, the main goal of your life and every human life is enlightenment so that anything that distracts you from that enlightenment is bad. So getting wrapped up in the things of this world in the things of action is bad because it distracts you. So what you need to do, um, I think Krishna says is you, you do need to engage in action. You, you can't help but act as you're, if you're embodied, if you're, you're here incarnated into this body in this natural world, you can't help but act. But the, um, the, 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 the trick is to engage in action, but to renounce the fruits of action. So Krishna says to him, I have already told you that in this world, aspirants may find enlightenment by two different paths. For the contemplative is the path of knowledge. For the active is the path of selfless action. And it's that selfless action which is the trick, right? Freedom from activity is never achieved by abstaining from action. Nobody can become perfect by merely ceasing to act. In fact, nobody can ever rest from his activity, even for a moment. We're going to act. All are helplessly forced to act by the gunas. A man who renounces certain physical actions but still lets his mind dwell on the objects of his sensual desire is deceiving himself. He can only be called a hypocrite. The truly admirable man controls his senses by the power of his will. All his actions are disinterested. That is, I act, but I don't act for the purpose of something coming out of my act. I just act. All are directed along the path to union with Brahman. Activity is better than inertia. Act, but with self-control. If you are lazy, you cannot even sustain your own body. The world is imprisoned in its own activity, except when actions are performed as worship of God. 
Therefore, you must perform every action sacramentally and be free from all attachments to results, which is a really genius, wonderful, credible thing to say. You know, um, it's not bad to act as long as we don't care about the results of our action. We just act as a, as a duty. Uh, as he said, actions are performed as worship of God. That is our action itself, he says, is sacramental. Like a sacrifice, you know, when when people bring a sacrifice in different religions to the altar, to their god or gods, the idea is that they don't expect to get anything out of it. It's just something they give up to God out of, out of an obligation. They don't expect to get anything out of that sacrifice. It's true. It wouldn't be a sacrifice if they expected to get anything out of it. So you and I have to act, but the worst thing we can do can do is to get wrapped up in the results of action. So we just act as a sacrifice, as a form of worship. And the key is to be disinterested, uh, to act without desire and without an expectation of getting th anything out of it. We act for its own sake, not for the sake of any product of that action. <laughs>